Mela Davila, I'm sure many of you know her, has developed a professional career combining research, writing, translation, and curatorial practices with artists, collections, and other fields that are related. This is a very good summary, in fact, of her CV. She has collaborated as an independent researcher in many different or with many different institutions, such as Castle's Documentation, the German uh, Museum of Art, Reina Sofia Museum, Instituto Cervantes, and a long list of institutions, and has also held institutional um, role such as head of the publication department in MAGBA and also she was head of the Center of Studies and Documentation of MAGBA. She was also worked in the National Museum Reina Sofia where she led public activities. She has published lots of papers and books and the most recent book has been Mission and Commission documenting on the art market. And thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you for the invitation. As Jorge, I am very happy to be part of the team that has prepared this as a member of the scientific committee. I have thousands of ideas and notes and things to comment, but I better leave that for later and introduce Katarina very briefly and then we can have a bit of a conversation. Kamatira Simao is an artist and lives and works between Mozambique and Portugal. Her practice is developed in research, long-term research projects entailing collaboration with institutions and non-institutions and also different forms of public presentation. In 2009, Simao started a strong connection with Mozambique and with institutional memory that has led on to video and installations where the artist employs, amongst other things, the reappropriation of photography, documentation, and cinema material. Katarina is here today essentially because of a project she's working on, which is called Sala Colonial, a project that she started in 2021. And I'm not too sure if it's closed, completed or not. Never completed, never completed. OK, it's still open. In current times, the title is Sala Colonial or Colonial Hall. And it is developed in La Melo in the north of Portugal. And in this project, the Museum of Lamego participate and the Latino Coelho Secondary School and the director of the Lamego Museum is also here amongst the audience and I hope we can invite her to the debate later. Katarina explores the resistance of the colonial archive to take on the links that the concept of representation maintains with the violence of tradition and dominant routines. And I will stop there. And you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mila. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I will be speaking in Spanish. I may get it wrong sometimes, but I'll try. So it is a great pleasure for me to be here in Barcelona to work with this incredible team. So I would like to thank you, particularly Jorge, my former professor, who called me for this event. Mela, I met her now, Pilar, Silvia, and everyone else in the team. Those who have made the most to uh, maintain some idiosyncrasies with my computer and with my dislike for PowerPoint which is more than a dislike, but anyway, not a subject of our conversation. As Mela was saying, Sala Colonial is a project that is still in progress. And today I'm going to talk to you about a film I made, which was the driver for this project and the document of what has happened so far, because the project, but we have plans for this project to continue it. And we're saying in 
plural we have because this project involves many more people and particularly two institutions that Mela already mentioned. One is a museum and the other one is a secondary school. The museum is the Museum of Lamego and the school is the Latino Coelho Secondary School also in Lamego. And as Mela also said, the city of Lamego, for those of you who are not too familiar with the geography in Portugal, is a city, a Portuguese city, in the north part of Portugal with a lot of culture and uh, story. Um, and it is located in the Douro where the good wine comes from, as everybody knows. And it so happens that since 1980, the Museum of Lamego has a collection of about 300 African artifacts. It was this collection that led the director of the museum, Alexandra Falcao, to contact me at the end of 2020 with a proposal for mediation around these objects. The Museum of Lamego is not an ethnographic museum. This collection came to the museum from the hands of the Latino Coelho School, which was the former Liceo Nacional of Lamego. And this is the school the objects legally belong to. And when this school disposed of the collection, they deacted deactivated a space within the school that served for the propaganda of the Portuguese colonial empire in Africa, where these artifacts had been exhibited. This room was originally called Colonial Hall. That's what gave name to a project. So here on screen, we can see a screenshot of the first sequence of the film. This is how it starts, even before we can see the credits. And it shows an unglamorous room. This is not the colonial hall. This is the deposit or storage room of Lamego Deposit. We see two workers in the museum, two members of the staff, discovering these uh, objects. We can guess that there'll be more information about these objects through documentation that exists or is available in these institutions. This documentation has uh, some obsolete designations and spellings, which end up speaking little about the objects themselves, but rather talk about what has been built around them to create a specific function or an effect, a capital. And this is what I want to talk about today with this project. But before I do that, I would like to open some space, open up a space to talk about a problem, and we can continue later. Despite the fact that these objects are together with other relevant pieces, and the Museum of Lamego includes several objects that are classified as national treasures, especially sacred art and decorative arts, of the Renaissance and Baroque periods, this collection runs the risk of becoming insignificant. And why am I saying this? Because the information on their original provenance is very vague. The inventory refers sometimes only to the continent, African continent or the name of the countries of Angola, Mozambique, Sao Tome and Principe, Cape Verde and Guinea-Bissau. And only occasionally does it refer to the cultural group with which it is associated. However, in most cases, there is information on the name of the person or the family who 
donated the piece to the collection. This low level of information therefore makes it necessary to reproduce even here in this presentation, this public presentation, the general geographical reference of Africa for its designation, which is also its category. And on this point, the Lamego Museum inherits the same problem of epistemological violence of the 19th century ethnographic archive that created the label Africa has no history to organize the objects brought from the missions to European museums. In other words, by reproducing omissions, we are reiterating and revalidating the colonial demarcators, which are omission, exclusion, and hierarchization. So it is difficult to re recreate individually or as a collective, this collection individually or as a whole, in a new context, even to restitute or repatriate them without in-depth research, which is something that, as we know, requires a lot of investment and depends on the political interest of the central government. And this is a debate, obviously, that does not uh, fit here, but I still had to talk about it in order to properly explain what we did if it wasn't that. So the Sala Colonial project was able to combine research, pedagogy, with some elements of performativity. And I'm saying this because it set out to work within the very problem it uh, wants to highlight. It responds to the desire to know Lamego's colonial past through these objects and then at the same time to respond to the urgent and very conscious need to unlearn it. This project is like a step towards the critical re-signification of a very singular chapter of racist pedagogy in Portugal. And we work with the museum team. They were fabulous with school teachers and especially with a class of young students, 10th year students in Portugal. I think it's a fourth year of high school here, which is secondary education in Spain, in order to do this project, Sala Colonial. Well, this picture was taken on the day of the inauguration of the exhibition room in 1938. And it's the only visual proof of the room in its original configuration. The colonial room marks a moment when Salazar's administration decided to bet for the African space if they didn't want to lose its influence in benefit of other European powers that threatened Portugal of overtaking their occupied territories. This pointed to more levels of violence and oppression. In the colonial room, in the 1938 colonial room, a Portuguese monument from the time of the discoveries occupied a symbolic and central place in the space. In addition to African artifacts, the room brought together a set of other elements such as colonial books and maps, pseudo-ethnographic photographs, paintings of virgin landscapes, animal schools and skins, plant species, etc. Here, a vision of Portugal's history was told in a very broad universal touch. A hypnotic construction is recognized. The Pedrao, as we call the monument, calls for focused attention and reduced peripheral awareness. There is a greater responsiveness to suggestion. It is also the perfect metaphor for the idea of empire with its celebratory and generalist engine. 
it mobilizes historical evidence but does not need to prove it. The economic way in which the room was created with donations of objects from the former colonies were made by teachers and students who were themselves involved in its decoration. This This points at a long-term project. In the film, I did zoom into this poor quality picture to try and recreate this awareness of uh, limitations and boundaries. Here we can see a document that was attached to the African artifacts in the museum. In 1980, the school disposed of the African objects and deposited them in the Lamigo Museum, which kept them in storage. The other items from the colonial room were relegated to the basement or reintegrated in the school. And some still are in daily contact with pupils on these cards accompanying the collection. The line, the red line, marks the objects that were not kept and reused at the school. Namely, plant and animal species. You will find them in the Natural Science Museum at the school. I wanted to show you this small artifact that we have used with our students in order to identify on the basis of this picture the main elements that can be spotted. It's like a script that allows us to find scientific artifacts, plants, books, our grandparents' memories, histories of the objects, donors, etc. In this picture, we are visiting the museum with a group of youth who wanted to touch the objects. And then we suggested them or ask them to choose three objects in order to dig into them through an x-ray exercise this was a collaboration with a local hospital here we have a picture of four objects the students chose the mask as the most important and relevant one because well this is the one they chose. We also visited the room where the padrão is still exposed or exhibited. Here is another picture or pictures which I consider to be pseudo-ethnographic. A large amount of books on colonialism that were found both in the basement and in the library shelves uh, bit, um, apart from where students sit nonetheless they are still there this picture shows the stamp colonial room sala colonial that marks the books as being part of the collection in this picture, we are in a room called Science Museum, and the teacher is about to show us, out of all the objects in the museum, which ones have already or had already been used in the colonial room. Here in this, in the here you can see samples of plants cotton which in the colonial room 
had the, the connotation of being an indigenous product. And now, <clears throat> one of the students was asking about the skeleton that you can see at the end of the room. And the teacher used her skills on physical anthropology and pointed at the fact that the skull, which is a real skeleton, could have belonged to a black man due to a primary variation in the size of the hand bones. And this made me think in these images. Well, these images allowed me to realize that one of the students had compared his hand with the skeletons. The idea, again, of economy, which was inherited by the school, the base of a of an exhibition structure, which was made with a box in which originally seeds were stored or similar products with the name of the student that had donated the seeds, Manuel de Mello, number 28, there should be many more boxes like this in the colonial room. Here's another piece of information about donors. A more, let's say, <laughs> reputated donor in this case, because the news were published in the local newspaper a donor of 47 objects in this case, coming from Angola. In this picture, you can see one of the objects chosen by our pupils. This object raised curiosity, the curiosity of pupils. It has its sense of humor because it represents a conqueror, a deformed conqueror, riding a tiny bicycle. It's not the only object that ridiculizes conquerors. And thanks to the x-ray technique, we could dig into the analysis of this image. Is this information equally valid as written documents, considering that this represents a direct relationship between the artist and the owner? a certain form of complicity, right, in accepting to be represented in such a ridiculous way. And the artist is expressing its resistance, his or her resistance, in a non-threatening way. In this specific case, we managed to give continuity. Do I have to stop? OK, I'm about to conclude. There's a certain continuity between the object, the donor, and the, well, here you can see Jose Roseira, who is the great grandchildren of Jill Roseira, the donor, who explains his relationship or his position within the conqueror's family. And he explained the racist history of his family before all our students, which had a very significant impact. After the session, our pupils also shared their family's history. This is it from me. Thank you very much.